horse drop hunt. I always look forward to these hunts. We're gonna go elk hunting. Seems to be chaos up there. The bull is just hot. Headed in, anticipation is high, and you still just have that sense of you just never know what you're gonna run into in here. Whether it's grizzly bears or big bulls or no bulls or bulls, you just never know. So, another backcountry horse drop. I love these hunts. Get into your unit with fresh legs, and then you don't have to baby any horses when you're in there you just hunt so pros and cons to about every situation but these are fun ones I'm looking forward to it and uh, we got about you know, three four miles left probably ride the horses and enjoy the scenery Well, thanks for the lift. You bet, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Glad to oblige. Can't beat being this far in and having fresh legs. Yeah, <laughs> That's for sure. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Camp set up. We got our food hung up there above camp, over 100 yards above camp. Haven't seen any bear sign, but you never know. But I think we're just gonna hike above camp tonight and see what we can find, see if there's anything closer. Uh, just right above camp here. Should be a fair amount of elk in this country. So let's take a little walk for the last few hours of light and uh, see what we can find. We're not gonna get crazy. I think these creek bottoms, a lot of this area, it's the only place with water. So those elk are gonna have to come down to the bottom to get water unless they find a spring somewhere. But there's a lot of elk tracks on the trail. Is that a bugle? Thought I heard a bugle. Got the creek and the wind blowing. It's hard to tell, I guess. But yeah, we're just gonna mosey our way up and see what we can glass up. First evening. As we hiked up the drainage, we bumped a few cows out of the bottom that had come down uh, to get some water. Uh, so we sat down and, and got our glass out and just watched those cows and just kind of wanted to get a feel for what was going on. Those were the first elk that we had seen in there. So we sat down and we watched those cows go all the way up and then out of the drainage a little bit to the right of us, we saw this bull come out. Oh, there he is. Those other elk must be going up that far side, huh? Mm -hmm. He saw those cows spook up and those cows really caught his attention and he ran all the way across the basin to those cows.
He says, okay, I'll come down here. Yeah, it's a solid bowl, dude. I wish he was in the open a little bit more. Now, as I watched that, I kind of wanted to see, you know, what kind of temperament that bull had because it's, that's a little bit crazy, as I like to say, when it comes to uh, elk hunting for a bull to run all the way across the basin. He's by himself, of course, but to check out some cow. So that cow or that bull is really, really looking. And so that's when I knew that we were going to have something to play with. As we were sitting there, we were about six or 700 yards away. It was a pretty good distance. And that's why I ripped out a few of those nice, loud location beagles, a good high note to really kind of see what that bull is made of and how responsive he was. Uh, obviously, he, he would hit me every time back with a bugle, which uh, he, was, he was really wound up. Well, we got, seems to be chaos up there. The bull is just hot. And he's a 340 bull. I think you're crazy if you pass that bull up. Even though there's bigger ones around. If it's all right with you, Joe, should we, sh should we shoot him or wait? He's really pretty sick. I just hope the wind doesn't come. The bobbles. As we worked in closer to this bull, it wasn't quite evening time yet and the wind just really quite wasn't what it should have been or needed to be for me to get closer. So we hung back and, and I called at that bull. Uh, I gave him a couple of those uh, nice high note challenge bugles and some lost calf calls back and forth and he would answer him but he just wouldn't come down the mountain. That's when it kind of hit me and, and I kind of had a flashback of 2016 and when I encountered a bull that was kind of acting the same way. He, he would bugle every 30 seconds or two minutes, running around like crazy. I call those bulls suicidal bulls because they're always giving you their location and they're covering a lot of country. They're moving around a bit. So that's easy for a bow hunter to just kind of get in position and be able to 
uh, maneuver in and get into bow range. Ultimately, as the evening wore on and the wind started dropping down the mountain, I could hear that bull up on top and I heard that he dropped over the backside a little bit. So that told me that he was losing interest maybe a little bit. Maybe he, he expected me to make the final move. And so as I had that wind, we hiked up there and we got to about where he was on that knob and he ended up being another 200 yards down the drainage. Now, once again, I, I threw the two big ones at him, the lost calf call and a challenge bugle or a bull calling cows bugle. And I separated them out and I, I allowed him to respond to both of those and not you know, make those calls too close together. So he responded to the lost calf with just you know, a rip and bugle and then he also responded to a challenge bugle with a rip and bugle, but he wouldn't come in. Well, we got to the top of the hill and this bull is down on the far side and you guys saw him and he's bugling, but he won't come in at all. He's just kind of 180 yards. And he's, he's looking up here and bugling at us, but he's not, he's not finishing. So we're gonna, he's actually moving down a little bit. We're gonna get our packs and go back down and try to get in from below him. Cause it's getting a little later. Hopefully we'll have some downward thermals. Got lots of terrain to work with. So if we can't call him in, let's go stalk in and kill him. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you have to be flexible. You have to be able to adapt to the scenario. You got to be on your calling game and you also have to be on your spot and stock game. So as the evening wore on and we kind of faded out the drainage and he just did his thing and he would just cross a drainage, come up onto the ridge and rip a bugle. And then he would cross another drainage, and these are small finger drainages, and get up on a ridge and rip a bugle. So I followed him all the way out, probably about a mile of that. And we're just playing cat and mouse. I don't want to get too close. At this point, I am absolutely not calling at him at all. And he ended up on this vantage point, or this vista, and bugled for, heck, probably 45 minutes or an hour. just bugling his brains out every 30 seconds to a minute and a half probably, but he's not gonna come into a call. He's non-confrontational. He probably just likes to hear himself bugle. So as he moved, and that's all it took, is I was just in position at like 150 yards away, and as soon as he got behind that ridge, that's when I was like, okay, this is my chance. I need to get up above this bull and get in on him and try to kill him from above. At that point, as we moved out, we had more of those westerlies and the wind just blowing right in my face. So we didn't have the thermals to work with anymore. We were kind of out on the point of the ridge. So that's when you kind of fade into the, the prevailing wind, which is a westerly, which really, really helped me out for that scenario. So as me and Joe, we just hump it right up to the top of the ridge 
and we got up and around that bull, and that's a beautiful thing. This bull is bugling every minute, every minute and a half, maybe every two minutes. So he's telling us where he's at at all times. That makes our job so much easier getting in on him. And so we got right above him, and we, we got lucky too, because that bull finally decided that he was gonna work up the ridge and drop into the next basin behind us. And we were ready for him and waiting, and it worked out perfectly. Hey guys, we have big things coming here at Eastman's. I've been working on the online mule deer course for several months now here, and I couldn't be any more excited to bring you the most comprehensive online video mule deer course uh, created. This course has over 75 specific videos on anything from gear, tips, tactics, examples, uh, first aid, and everything in between. I'm working with Brian Barney and Guy Eastman, and we brought all those years of experience, 80 years of experience, to give you guys the most in-depth and reveal all our tricks of the trade when it comes to mule deer hunting. So I hope you check out the Eastman's online mule deer course. Visit eastmans.com for more details. Well, well. Update here, we replayed the footage and it was just a little back. He was slightly quartering toward me and I wanted to keep that arrow off the shoulder blade and I know, you know, when I pulled up, he saw me, uh, it was 43 yards, he saw me and I was like, dang it, now he could spin and you don't know what's gonna happen. So I held it back just a little bit so I wouldn't hit that shoulder blade. As he ran off, I threw the binos up and I could see blood just gushing. And I was like, that's why I was like, yeah, it's, it's over. And it is. We uh, followed the blood and I was like, well, 
maybe if it is like a back long liver, we need to give him some time. So we gave him three and a half hours and uh, then decided to trail him up. Great bull, he's really long, really long. Heck yeah, look at that, that's 20 inch Royals. It's gotta be 16 inch fifth back there. Just a nice big six. Heck yeah. Hey, come look at this, come look at this arrow. Look at that. So, this is a good example of what happens when elk spook He's, uh, okay, he's still blood coming out. He spun and that arrow is quartering away. But let's see, there's the last rib right here. So we're like two, two ribs up, quartering forward. There's no exit, so he's just not gonna bleed much. I don't know if I, oh, it, it, it's broke. Kinda broke. He's probably wiggling around in there, which is it's fine. I mean, it's doing its job. All right, well, we're gonna get this bull gutted uh, for the night, and uh, I've done this before. We'll get her gutted, and we'll leave her shirts out here and uh, keep the grizzly bears away, hopefully, and then we'll come back up in the morning for pictures and uh, quarter mountain back to camp. So, couldn't be any happier. You need to watch for bears too, okay? Just keep your eyes peeled around us while we're doing this. All right, well, here he is. Made it back up here at first light. You can see last night, we, uh, we, I left him on his back, got his hams open, got his whole pelvic area cleared out so that air can flow and, and uh, cool those hams out. I also like to get him up on logs, see this log under his back, get some airflow underneath his back and his shoulders so those back straps don't get sour. Um, and then I split him up here Obviously, we're not going to take the cape on this bull, even though it's a pretty nice cape. But, uh, and pull the esophagus so you have airflow down the neck and into the chest cavity, too. And that'll just allow that airflow and that cooling. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so important to get these things cooled down uh, as quick as you can. Another great bull down. I couldn't be any happier. Just thank the Lord that I can be out here doing this year after year. It never gets old. I, I love bow hunting elk. We're uh, gonna get him quartered up and back to camp and text out with inReach to Ike and he's gonna come get us tomorrow. Got our paces forward to finish this hunt up, but it's far from over. <laughs> Got the old F1 mainframe with the hind and the head and a uh, little movement in the rack. That's what you need. It'll make coming off this way easier. So down the mountain we go. Nice and loose. Shape. This one's really weird. Yeah. Wide and make something cool out of that. Wow. It's like a little nugget. You know what that reminds me of? It's one of those corn nuts. 
crazy. That's wild. Got shells of corn now. No wonder he's a little off in the head. His ivories were all jacked up and he was missing the front tooth.